Thank you for joining us online today. Our mission here at Destiny is to win souls, make disciples, and help you live out your destiny. We would love to connect with you, so be sure that you follow us on our Facebook page at Destiny GSO. And make sure that you subscribe so that you can share this message with someone. Now, get ready for an awesome word from our pastor, Pastor Lee Stokes. There's much more than what you're seeing now. This is all a test. This is all a test for the real life that's coming up. The eternal life. Y'all, come on, somebody. No more sickness, no more disease. Oh, Lord Jesus. This is going to be fun. Eat all you want and still look like Keith. I've been talking to the Lord about you, boy. I've been like, now, Lord, how are you going to do that? How come I smell chicken and get fat? He eats all day and gets skinnier. What is this? I've never gone on a cruise and come back skinny. I digress, y'all. Forgive me. Then, okay, uh, oh yeah, watch. This, we're talking about the rich young ruler. He went away mad, right? Then Peter began to say to Jesus, hold up, we left all and have followed you, right? So Jesus answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, there's no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children for my la- for, or lands for my sake in the gospels. He said, no one, no one can give up anything here in this earth without some benefit on the other side. And a hundredfold return right here now. So there's temporal benefits for serving and giving and there's eternal benefits. Who should not receive a hundredfold win? Come on, say it real loud, y'all. Now in this time, what? Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, with persecution. That says people are going to get mad at you for serving, for giving. And they're going to get mad at your blessed life. All right? He says, Uh, and in the age to come, Eternal life. He says, so there's a benefit afterwards too. Benefit now and benefit there. We're supposed to live to give. Are y'all with me? And give in order to live. Are y'all seeing this? Turn over to uh, um, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. Did I read the last one? Yeah. Look at this. Jesus said this. And this is in the, uh, yeah. And the two shall become, hold up. Did I give you all the wrong one? I sure did. Matthew. No, y'all put up the wrong one. Matthew 10, not Mark, Matthew. There it is. Make some noise for him in the back. Look what Jesus says here when he's sending out his disciples. That's us. He says, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Why? Freely without pay, you have received this. So freely without charge, give it. Freely you've received, freely give it. Come on, somebody. All right, we've got healing to give. All we do is got the hands. We're the conduit. We're the, we're the, we're the ones, we're the, the, the funnel to the people. That's what happened with the tornado victims, right? I, I, and so many people joined in together to help us be a blessing. Are you with me? And, and that's what this is. We give and, and it shows the love of God through us to them. And God says, I'm going to pay you back for that. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. He says, he who gives to the poor actually just lends to the Lord and he will repay him. God said, good God. Isn't that good? Amen. Turn over in your Bible, turn over in your Bible to Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. In fact, the Bible says it's more beneficial to give than it is to receive. I told you the, the kingdom of God is flipped upside down. Come on. Everybody loves their birthday. Everybody loves Christmas. God says this is more blessed to get. Watch, here it is. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, Paul writes, that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. What? How come that is? Because you get benefit here on earth and benefit in heaven. Benefit eternally. Are y'all with me? Say it's more blessed to give than to receive. It's a principle. It's a principle like, uh, like those other secrets of the kingdom. There's secrets in the kingdom that Jesus described. There's secrets, secrets of unity, secrets of the laws of use. They're laws of the kingdom. Here's one of them. Acts, excuse me, Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. It's the law of reciprocity. Here he says it. Give and it 
will be given to you. Isn't that right? You go give somebody a black eye, you're probably going to get one back. The Bible says he who shows himself friendly will have many friends. Isn't that right? You show yourself a friend, you'll have many friends. Amen. You give to people, people will give to you. Amen. Giving it will show be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. And with the same measure that you use, that same, will, that same measuring stick will be used back with you. And so if you use a little teaspoon, a teaspoon will be used back. But if you use a shovel, you you give with great energy. You give with enthusiasm. In fact, the Bible shows us how to give. He says, uh, use it will be measured back to you. Turn on over here. I'll show you right here. Look, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 11. I'm going to read in the Amplified. Are y'all learning? Remember this, Paul writes, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously, why? That blessings may come to someone. He gives so someone else is blessed, right? Will also reap generously and with blessings. Uh huh. Let each one give as he's made up his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God, watch this, loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Did y'all see that? You know, the, the true sign of love is in giving. For God so the world that he, oh, so love is indicated by how we give. Isn't that right? He says, and God is able to make how much grace, all grace. What is that? Every favor and earthly blessing. How many of y'all like some of that? He said, God's in control of all of it. He's got all of it. And as you'll just become the conduit, if you'll become the vehicle for his goodness, Right. You take someone, you give it to someone else. You pour your time. You give your time out. You give your love. You give your smiles. You give of yourself. Are you with me? Isn't that what life is, though? On your job, you you you. Well, first, before you even get the job, you take time to invest in your skills. So you go to your go to school and you spend years building and building and finding out the your gifts and then utilizing those gifts to give them away. Isn't that right? Then you get, you get married and you find someone to give your life there too. Get jo- joined in a church and find a place to give yourself there. Your life is to be given away. It's to be given away. Why? Because that's how God's able to multiply life back to you. Come on, hit the person next to you. Say, it's time to give ourselves away. God has been able to make all grace, every earthly favor come to you. How? Uh Uh-oh, come on, y'all, follow along. In abundance. Why? So that you may always and under all circumstances. Don't you like that? Always and under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance. Why? For every good work and charitable donation. God said, I want to give you more so you can give more. Give to live. There it is right there. Give to live. And I live to give. Right? As it is written, the benevolent, the giving person scatters abroad. He gives to the poor his deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure in into eternity. It has an impact in your eternal life. Come on, give God a big old shout of praise. Isn't that good news? He said, that's your part. Look what God's part is. And God who provides seed for the sower. God gives you seed in your hand. Hold up, hold up. Some of us don't see it like that. He gives us seed. Oh, I'm going to show you another verse that lets us clearly know this. And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for the eating. Why people end up broke is because they eat their seed. They never take a portion of it and first give it away. 
Give away a portion of their time. Give away, give away a portion of your love. Give away. Give some of that away. Say, give it away. Yeah, God provides seeds for the bread for the needing, and also will provide and multiply your resources for sowing. There it is. And increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. Is there another one? Yeah. Thus you will be enriched in ghetto version, everything. That's everything, y'all. Enriched in health, enriched in wealth, enriched in peace. Come on, anybody like some, some good peace? Nothing like that, y'all. So that you can be what? Uh oh, y'all better get on board with me here. So that you can be what? So that you can be, he says, I'm blessing you so you can be generous. Don't make the mistake that so many make. God blesses them and then they stop. They forget doing what, what got them there. It was you giving yourself to your fiance in time, going out of your way that made them want to, to marry you. But now you got stingy with everything. Don't make me break that down. I'm a hold back. I'm fighting right now. I'm fighting right now. I'm going to let Bob and Inda break that down in the marriage class. Hold on, hold on. Let me just break this down for a second. Just a second. Turn over, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to come back here. But just for a second, because I want you all to see this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on, I can do this. I'm preaching. <laughs> Somebody's like, that ain't in the notes, so... Look at verse uh, 19. Come on, make some noise for him in the back. I heard my brother back there. Oh, read this. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? You are not your own. Uh Oh, hit the next one. You were bought with a price purchased with the preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. God said, your body ain't yours to do with what you want to. There's another place. I'm going to let Bob and then break this down for you in the class. But the, yes, in the very next chapter, in the very next chapter, it breaks down if you're married. Now, if you're single, all the single people make some noise. <laughs> all that stuff God gave you is not yours to give away. Don't make me break that down right here. Y'all know I can break it down. I will break that down. Don't play with me. That ain't your stuff to give away. The next chapter says, when you get married, that body of your sister belongs to your husband and his body belongs to you. Y'all know I want to break it down, but I'm going I'm to let Bob in. <laughs> Say, don't be stingy. Look at your spouse. Single people just look up to the Lord, but all you married people look at your spouse. <laughs> all right, I, I messed around enough. Let me get back here. Get on point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now y'all, y'all. Somebody said, thank you, pastor. No, somebody already said it down in the front. Thank you, pastor. <laughs> oh, it's fun to give. Come on, somebody. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Stop, settle down now. Turn over to Ephesians. <laughs> Turn over to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. This lets us know how, how, how serious God is about this. In, chapter, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, let the thief steal no more. Stop stealing stuff, y'all. <laughs> All right, I got to break it down. I can see that. If you don't pay for cable, but yet you have cable...
Okay, uh, uh, y'all get the point. Let me go on. Let the thief steal no more, but rather let him be industrious. That means get a job, get creative, create a business, making an honest living with his own hands. Why? So that he may be able to give. Get a job so you can live. Hold on. God is saying something here. Get a job so you can have first to give. Why do I have to give? So you can live. Y'all get the priority here? All right, all right, all right. To those in need, say amen right there. Say live to give and give to live. Now, look over at Mark chapter, now that's what we just talked about, our money, but let's talk about our life, our service. Mark chapter 10. Hurry, 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 y'all. Good, gracious. Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 45. Remember, the, Jesus was saying, you give your life through service. Then James and John, the sons of thunder, and uh, the sons of Zebedee came to him saying, teacher, we want you to do, uh, we want to, you to do for us whatever we ask. That's uh, in that boldness right there. Lord, we want you to do whatever we ask you right here. <laughs> like, What? And he said to them, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. We want to get some, we we want to get, we want to get some of that that, that seat right up next to you. We want that position in heaven. We want a nice position in heaven. He says, but Jesus said to them, do not, do you not know what you, you don't not, don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? Are you able to make the sacrifice that I'm going to make? Watch this. They said to him, we are able. (laughs) So Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink. You are going to give up your life. You don't know it yet, but you will. (laughs) And with the baptism that I'm baptism that I'm baptized with, you will be baptized. Uh huh. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. Uh huh. And when the 10, those were two disciples. Here's the other 10. When the 10 heard it, they began to greatly be dis, to be greatly displeased with James. Now they got, oh man, I can't believe they asked him and I didn't get to ask him first. That's what they was really mad at. But Jesus called them to himself. All right, cut it out. Cut it out. Come on over here. And he said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles, they lord it. They exert authority over them. Yeah, they 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 exert authority over him. He says he says, yet not so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. You want to be great here? Start serving. And whoever you desires to be first shall be slave or servant of all. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus is saying it's flipped here. In the kingdom, you serve to be promoted. Hit the person next. They say, you got to get busy serving. You got to get busy serving. Uh Uh-huh. Look over at Philippians chapter two. I'm going to read it. Verse one through 11 in the message Bible. Say he's almost done. He's almost done. Watch this. Watch what Jesus says. This this is Paul teaching here. He says, if, if you've gotten anything at all out of the, out of falling Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me this favor. Do me a favor. Agree with each other. Isn't that what we said? Here's God's order. He says, here's how you serve in the kingdom of God. First of all, get along with each other. Hit the person next to you and say, I love you, whether you like it or not. Turn to your second choice. Say, you too, you too. Stop tripping. All right, I got to give you a little something extra here. Turn to the person behind you too. Say, you too. I ain't, I ain't forgot about you. Now, because they was turning around, wait for them to turn back around. Yeah. Tell them in front of you now. Tell them in front. Turn around. Uh Uh-huh. Y'all too. Come on. Tell me. Everybody point right up here. Hey, you back in the back, bro. Point at me. Hit that dude right behind you. That dude right there. Point at me, y'all. Point at me. Say, we love you too, Pastor. I love y'all too, for real. Now, don't make me say it next time. Just say it automatically. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Uh, Back up. I forgot where I was, y'all. I'm messing around. Agree with each other. Love each other. There you go. 
Be deep-spirited friends. Wow. Watch this. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be upset, obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Wow, is that awesome? I'm reading out of the Bible, y'all. He said, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantage of that status no matter what. He was equal with God, but he didn't, he didn't go, hey, 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 I'm the right, you better serve. Do y'all know I'm the pastor of this church? (laughs) Do you know who I am? He's saying, lose all that foolishness. Come on, get over yourself. Hit the person next to you. Say, we talked about that last week. Yeah. All right. He said he had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantage of that status, no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, watch this, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a servant or slave. God himself did that. Became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was incredibly humbling, an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privilege. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. God himself became a man, became a servant and then died like a criminal. Watch what that did for him. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far above anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ. Because of what he did, everybody, watch what he says, and call out in praise and and, and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. Because he humbled himself, God promoted him. Come on, son. Somebody. When we humble ourselves and become servants in the kingdom of God, God says, I'm going to promote you. Oh, put them together right there. That's a good place. We see Jesus doing this. We saw him do it. Remember this? He was at the last supper with his disciples. He was getting ready to uh, go to the cross the next day. And y'all remember what he did? He, he, at the last supper, he took off his robe and put on a, a towel of a servant, wrapped it around him and started washing the disciples' feet. Here it is, John chapter 13, verse 13. He says, you call me teacher and Lord and you say, well, for I am so. Next. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. What is he saying? Serve one another. If I can serve you, why can't you serve one another? For I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. He's talking about serving each other. We are the body of Christ. You get it? Serve each other now. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he uh, who is sent greater than he who sent him. You get me saying, if I did it, I know you can't. If you know these things, blessed are you if you. He said, it's not just enough to know it. You got to do it. Hit the person next to you and say, just do it. Last verses we're going to look at here. Watch this. Turn over to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. Say, he's finishing now. That was pretty fast, wasn't it, y'all? And I don't mean get up out of your seat and run up out of here. Don't move. Hey, hold on. Let me show you proper protocol here. There's people here who will make a decision about Jesus. So right now, start, you know, you, 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 you start settling and like, hold on, hold on. This is the most important part of the service. Pastors done all this teaching. They've done all that singing. They've done all that stuff. We've received the offering. The most important part, what heaven is going to rejoice over is someone over one person that says, you know what? I need Jesus. So that's when you remain most calm right now. Get, start being prayerful right now is what you do. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right, watch this. Servant, I'm in Colossians 3, 22 through 24. Servants 
Obey in everything those who are your earthly masters or bosses. Not only when their eyes are on you as pleasers of men, but in simplicity of purpose with all your heart. Because, now, why is he saying this? Because you're a kingdom representative there. At work, you're not just working for them. You're representing the kingdom there. So serve the boss. Serve even there. Don't start running them down. Stop refusing. Oh, I don't do that. I don't, I, I don't take out the trash. I don't cut out. Now, it's not, I can't do that. Ooh, man, that felt a little dangerous right there. Let me get back. <laughs> Servants obey in everything. Those who are your earthly masters, not only when, not only when their eyes are on you as pleasers of men, But in simplicity of purpose with all your heart because your reverence for the Lord and as a sincere expression of your devotion to him. Watch this. Whatever may be your task, work at it hardly from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. Oh, I'm going to wait for y'all to catch on to that because that's huge right there. He said, if you're sweeping the floor, sweep it like it's the Lord's floor. Are you with me? If you're working the cash register, work, if you're working at McDonald's, you're working the cash register, work at it like it's the Lord's cash register. Are y'all with me? Be a servant for him. Watch this. Knowing with all certainty when I'm working for him, that it is from the Lord and not from men that you will receive the inheritance, which is your real reward. That paycheck is just getting you over here so you have something in your hand to get the real test, the real reward. Come on, do y'all see how good the Bible is here? Say, life is just a test. Uh huh. He says, and not for men, that you will receive the inheritance, which is your real reward. The one whom you are actually serving is the Lord Christ, the Messiah. Now you can close your Bible. If destiny or the message that you've just heard has impacted your life in any way and you would like to partner with us financially, you can go to our website, www.leestokes.org and click on the Donate Now button. We hope you've enjoyed the message. Thank you for watching.